Welcome back. We hope you, we hope you have enjoyed tonight's debate uh, in both the race for Lieutenant Governor and the race for District 59. We've had some very substantive answers to the important issues which face you, the Ascension Parish voters. And the next forum is no doubt going to meet those standards. We are now going to focus on the race for State Representative District 81. And we have both candidates who are competing for that seat today. Our first candidate is Mr. Lester McGlynn. Mr. McGlynn is a Republican candidate for State Representative in District 81. He owns and manages McGlynn Taylor, a local land surveying and engineering company that employs more than 20 people with locations in Gonzales and Livingston. He, Mr. McGlynn is a conservative Christian. He is married to Deanne McGlynn, who is with us tonight as well. Our next candidate is Mr. Clay Schecksneider. Representative Schecksneider is Ascension Parish Republican who was elected to the House of Representatives for District 81 in 2011. He is married to Phoebe Keller Schecksneider and has four children, Jonathan, Bo, Channing, and Cambry. He is the owner and operator of CarCraft Automotive since 1988. He is also a reserve deputy for the Ascension Parish Sheriff's Office and served on the Mounted Division and a graduate from French Settlement High School and of the Allen Institute in Atlanta. Gentlemen, thank you both for being here tonight. The rules for the debate or forum are as follows. Each of you will be given a question. Uh, we will rotate as to who answers the question first. Mr. McGlynn, you are, uh, pick the first draw, so you get to answer the first question first. You have 60 seconds to answer the questions. After about 30 minutes, we will move on to the closing statements, where each of you will have 90 seconds uh, for a closing statement. Are you all ready to proceed? Yes, sir. Excellent. Mr. McGlynn, the first question that goes <coughs> to you. Uh, the state is facing a significant budget crisis uh, because tax revenues do not meet our spending needs. Every business owner knows that in order to operate a business successfully, the income must exceed the outcome. If you're spending too much, you'll go out of business very soon. What message do you give to business owners about how to correct the state's budget crisis? Are you in favor of cutting, ta cutting spending, raising taxes, or do you have another plan? I'm not in favor of raising taxes. Uh, first thing we do is cut, you know, find the areas you can cut in and do as much cuts as you can to, 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 to would not hurt the necessary stuff that you you need to keep. But uh, I've had to go through this in my business a few years ago when the times got hard and I had to make cuts since I had to have cuts in personnel and, and cuts in just all across the board. And I think that's, you start there and then you decide what you got once you get through with all the stuff, you, the necessary stuff you got to keep, and then you start looking in other areas for uh, gaining some other revenue somehow. But the first thing you do is go go with the cuts. Thank you, Mr. McGlynn. Mr. Chuck Snyder? Well, what I would start out by doing is prioritizing the budget process. Louisiana is locked down uh, what tax revenues are available in so many specific areas. Critical services like health care and higher ed or uh, all that are left on the chopping block. I would cut every dime of wasteful spending that we have, contracts, programs, positions that would not be critical to our state. And then I would start by funding higher ed from there. Thank you, Mr. Sheck Snyder. Um, the next question goes to you. Um, Ascension Parish continues to be an industrial economic development leader. Uh, one of the reasons for that is tax incentives that brings in new industry into the parish and into the state. Do you favor cutting those tax incentives or those tax credits? And if so, which industries would you target? Well, it's something that we definitely have to look at. Uh, you know, tax incentives are a, a big plus to industry and bringing money and jobs into our parish, into our district. My whole district encompasses, you know, of course, Livingston, Ascension, St. James, and St. John. All of those incentives have worked in, in all of the uh, parts of my uh, district. So uh, they're definitely something that has to be looked at that's critical to the vital parts of the state. But uh, I wouldn't be in favor of cutting all of them. It's just something that needs to be addressed and looked at. Mr. McGlynn? I think that uh, you, you look at the businesses that are, are coming into and you, you make decisions based on each one that comes in and, and decide with the local officials in, uh, that are in the cities and the
parish to decide what you can afford to do with the with the businesses i think you, you the incentives are a good way to get some big business in it's happened all over the all over the district all over uh, everywhere but i think that uh, you, that's something that needs to be of how much and what kind of uh, incentives should be discussed with and, and planned with all the, the delegation, the local officials, the parish officials, and the other delegation in the uh, House and the Senate. Thank you, Mr. McGlynn. The next question goes along with economic development. Uh, each year it seems that Ascension Parish attracts uh, or has many multinational businesses looking to relocate or to set up an operation in Ascension Parish due to its vast resources. Uh, however, uh, recent articles have labeled Louisiana very unbusiness friendly or very business unfriendly because of a court system. Uh, the Louisiana Association of Business and Industry has identified one issue in our court system that has been uh, one of the reasons why Louisiana has that label and that is a jury threshold. In other words, no civil litigant is entitled to a jury trial unless the case meets or exceeds $50,000. Are you in favor of cutting that jury threshold to make our business climate more appealable to uh, multinational businesses? I would be open to looking at decreasing it some, but I'm not in favor of it going to zero. Uh, I've talked with the with uh, judges and and uh, clerks and the people in the system and feel like it would bog it down. With with cannot fill a, a jury now, and so the, I would think that uh, I'd have to listen to the people in the industry and, and probably come somewhere uh, between zero and where it is now. Mr. Shecksnyder, how do you feel about the jury threshold and what is your position on reducing it or eliminating it? Well, as you know, this is, this is a, a bill that has come up twice in the legislature. Both times I have supported it. It is an issue that not only the concerns businesses, but it concerns local residents as well. Uh, we have the highest auto premiums in the country. We have the most frivolous lawsuits in the country. Only two states behind us is California and Texas. We have less cars on the road. We have less cars stolen. We have less accidents compared to those two states who have twice as many on the road as us. In order to bring a better business climate to our state, better environment, working environment, it is something that has to be addressed. If we don't, we're going to keep facing the challenges that we face now. As far as backlogging court systems, I don't see it being an issue. Other states have zero and they are not backlogged at all. Thank you, Mr. Sheck Snyder. Going to switch gears a little bit as we talk about business development. Uh, one of the key things uh, that is a concern to Ascension Parish is our infrastructure or more specifically, the lack of inf infrastructure. Most of our major arteries are state roads. Uh, as an elected statewide official, uh, what would you do to offer our parish government assistance in addressing our infrastructure and major road improvements? Mr. Sheck Snyder. Well, in order, to, in order to keep helping the parish move forward, what we'd have to do is keep working on GO program like we did with the uh, Highway 30 program. Uh, the GO program was one of them. We, uh, we have uh, monies put aside for it. Four-laning Highway 70. These are critical needs that were neglected in the past that needed to be done for business opportunities and businesses to come to the parish. Uh, Highway 44 south of I-10 out towards uh, Impala. These are roads that uh, industry, residents use, uh, they have funding now. They are going to be completed, and uh, I would work to keep doing those jo that job to bring those state highways up to par to what Ascension Parish has grown into. Thank you, Mr. Sheck Snyder. Mr. McGlynn, what would you do uh, if elected to help the parish government address its infrastructure needs? Well, I've been involved in, in this parish for, since 1992 in, in the development of the pro Parish, we've developed a lot of helped develop a lot of subdivisions throughout, and have been driving on these roads a long time. And and 
and I know there's problems. It's just not just 44, but you name one in, in here that needs to be taken care of and, and help. But I would do use my experience and my expertise in dealing with the highway department and, and uh, other areas to be able to help get the priorities right and to get the uh, projects going that uh, needs to be done. And uh, I think I could really uh, be a, a great asset to that. Thank you, Mr. McGlynn. The next question goes to you, and it's switching gears again uh, to talk about education. Of course, Ascension Parish is, uh, is one of the leaders in the state in terms of its public <laughs> education system, and education is a top priority in our state. What will you do to protect funding for K-12 through education as we navigate through the current budget crisis? Well, I, I, I think we, we do have the Ascension Parish and Livingston Parish and St. James and others do have really good schools. And I would keep th those, peop those uh, schools and these parishes funded so we could keep uh, having these schools. I'm not for going in and taking money out of the system to give the vouchers or anything like that. I think we need to keep the money into, into our schools and keep it in the classroom where, where it does the most good. And I would fight to, to keep that funded as it, as it is. Thank you, Mr. McGlynn. Mr. Schecksneider? Well, as, as you know, the state is obligated to take care of the MFP and to take care of public school funding. You know, last year alone we fought for uh, the MFP. We fought for $3.6 billion in the MFP for public schools. Uh, the Senate rejected a Bessie proposal for the MFP. We went back. We appropriated a 50, extra $50 million to it. The governor came back. He proposed another proposal. We rejected it. We also went back and put in another extra $84.8 million into the MFP. The things that I would do is keep doing what I was doing before, stand up for what is right, keep putting money in, into the system that is working now and presently, and just keep moving forward. Our system is working. We have the best school system in Ascension Parish, Livingston, St. James, and St. John is moving right in there with them. So I would keep doing the things that we're doing. Keeping on with education, the TOPS program is a state-funded scholarship program to keep our best and brightest in the state and award them scholarships to our state universities. Uh, some people criticize the TOPS program because there's abuse, uh, particularly for students who don't maintain the grade point average or end up flunking out of college. Do you support, Mr. Schecksneid, of the TOPS program in its current format, and are there any changes that can be made to TOPS to ensure that TOPS, the TOPS recipients live up to their end of the bargain? I do support TOPS. The one thing that can be done to help TOPS move forward and to keep it healthy is to hold some of these students accountable. Uh, I think we lack in that area when students come in and get these dollars and go to school and then neglect on finishing out their schooling, if we hold them accountable for it, uh, I think we would come out a lot better on the end. Having them come back to the state, work here, get jobs here, that would be a big plus for the TOPS program. Thank you, Mr. Schecksinder. Mr. McGlynn? I support it as it is right now, and um, I don't foresee wanting to <clears throat> make any changes to it. My ch a couple of my kids actually used it, and it's a very good tool for them and very, it helps a lot the families now but with the abuse part we probably do need to look at uh, some kind of solution to uh, eliminate the abuse but as it stands in its, its form now I'm, I'm very supportive of it thank you mr. McGlynn uh, the next question goes to you and it's going to change gears again a little bit uh, subsidized flood insurance is a, is a or f subsidized flood insurance premiums are a big issue to Ascension Parish residents, uh, many of whom live <coughs> in a flood area. Uh, Louisiana homeowners, however, will be negatively affected if that is ultimately taken away, as well as the resale housing market. As a state representative, how can you assist to protect Louisiana homeowners' issue as issues, issue is being presently considered on a national level? Well, this, the flood insurance program to me uh, on a federal level needs to be Changed. I mean, it needs to be fixed, but I don't see that happen anytime soon. But as far as the, being uh, subsidies, I'm in favor of doing that to help you know to help the people that need need to do that. My experience 
in my business with this flood insurance that it's it's really unfair in a lot of cases to to people to start with even have them in in a flood zone and because a lot of areas should not be in flood zones but that's that's just part of it but there's people that that are in there in that situation and need those subsidies and i'd be for 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 those thank you mr mcginn mr shake snyder what would you do to protect louisiana's homeowners as this issue is being debated nationally well what we've done so far is we passed a resolution the last two years to send to congress to work with our delegation up there to hold uh accountable the flood insurance back here home it has worked we have them in a uh, holding pattern as of now right now what needs to be done is is we need to keep pushing our federal uh, colleagues to put push for a better mapping system and to work with projects that will r reduce flooding back home to lower our flood insurance thank you mr jack snyder um, and the next question goes to you and it focuses a little bit on the operation of state government many people feel that the business of the state government is bloated too many employees doing too little work do you feel that there that there is cutting that can be made in state government uh, to make it more efficient and smaller I do and you know for the past four years uh, I've carried bills that have eliminated government uh, boards and commissions uh, we've eliminate, eliminated 64 boards and commissions that is way too many we have the most boards and commissions in any state that uh, is out there so to go in and say that it is bloated yes it is bloated there is too many out there it needs to be trimmed down and I will continue to carry that bill and trim down what we have done keep going forward and and eliminate that size of government thank you mr. shakes later mr. McGlynn do you feel that there's any room to cut state government to make it more efficient and smaller well I'm not in in there and seeing just the everyday and looking at each department and all that but I can tell you that just from what I know about dealing with the ones I deal with I believe there's a lot of room to, to cut in these departments and I think that the pressure needs to be put on them through especially through from the from the governor to get in there let's let's start trimming these these uh, departments down and you know there's probably I know you go to the DMV and you know you see these people sitting around in there and <laughs> It, it's it's frustrating to see that stuff, and I think there is a lot of a lot of room to uh, to cut, and I'd be for really holding their feet to the fire till they till they get them trimmed up. Thank you, Mr. McGlynn. Mr. McGlynn, the mission of the Ascension Chamber of Commerce is to facilitate and foster the economic growth of our members. What can you do to help us foster that mission? Well, we su we support the uh, Chamber of Commerce not only in, in uh, Ascension but with Livingston also, and uh, we would uh, we just with uh, in our business we do what we can to help and uh, and ask uh, when they we're asked to do something with the with the chamber we we work with them, and uh, that's that's just what we do in our business. Thank you, Mr. McGlynn. Mr. Sheck Snyder. Well, what we do is, and, and, I, and I've done in the past, the, the chamber, we would always be available for the chamber. The chamber comes in, and um, whether it be on a, a, a local level or whatever, the asking about jobs or opportunities to come into the parishes, businesses, anything that we can help do to uh, sure up the citizens of Ascension Parish, to sure up the uh, businesses of Ascension Parish to give them uh, assurance that uh, the government, uh, the businesses of a par the, the parish are going to be secure in being here and operating here. We would uh, we would give that security to the chamber to go out and tell the businesses that we have their back. We would be here for them. Thank you, Mr. Sheck Snyder. Uh, next question is directed to you. Um, do you support the expansion of the Medicaid program to assist and provide health care to indigent citizens of Louisiana and Ascension Parish? I did not support the expansion, but what we did do, it was, it was a little costly on the backsides of the taxpayers of Louisiana. But what we did do, we supported a HCR resolution that was a se HCR 75, which allowed Louisiana hospitals to do a self-assessed fee to draw down more federal dollars. 
for unpaid patients, provided that the state agreed to expand eligibility and potential 230 individuals in the financial gap. This could potentially save the state $100 million to $200 million. That is where we found a potential savings to help in health care. So. Thank you, Mr. Schechtsneider. Mr. McGlynn, what is your position on Medicaid? I think we should be we should extend those benefits because I think the, the people out there need those, the ones that are on it, and I, I'm for it. But I, then there again is this another area for a lot of waste and abuse, and I think that uh, that needs to be addressed. But uh, I'm, I'm not I'm, – I am for going ahead and extending those benefits to the, those people. Thank you. Uh, and we're coming to our final question, which will go to you first, Mr. McGlynn. Uh, the district uh, that y'all are running for, District 81, covers many parishes, Ascension included in it. Um, but what is the biggest concern that you feel uh, which your Ascension Parish constituents face today? Well, it's infrastructure. It's, it's, uh, I get those comments all the time that we need to do something with our roads. Uh, we also – the flooding issues that, that are – that they have, uh, you know, not only in Ascension Parish, but the uh, surrounding parishes, uh, they're affected by the same same thing. And uh, I just, I, I think that my uh, experience and expertise in, in the, just the infrastructure is going to help solve some of their concerns and, and, and uh, address the issues that, with them. It's the same thing with the flooding issues. And so, uh, but I think that's that's what they they're mainly what I'm hearing. Thank you, Mr. McGlynn. Mr. Schechtsneider, what is the biggest concern which faces Ascension Parish constituents today? I think the thing that uh, affects us the most here is uh, infrastructure, uh, flooding issues by far, uh, the roads and projects that I mentioned earlier, 70, 44, 30. Uh, those are major roads that need to be addressed and need to be looked at. The flooding issues, Ascension does a great job. They passed a tax 20 years ago, I think it was, that helped them a great deal without state dollars, without federal dollars to come in and help with the flooding issues. But we have been pushing for the past four years for a Blind River diversion. We have $21 million for that Blind River diversion that is going to help the whole district. Uh, Livingston mostly, St. James, St. John, uh, Ascension, that will cover our whole district and help us get the water out of here that we need out of here. So that is, that's, that's the things that I'm hearing as well. Thank you, Mr. Schechtsneider. Gentlemen, that concludes our round of questions for tonight. You will now ha each have 90 seconds to make a closing statement, starting with you, Mr. McGlynn. Well, I'd like to start off with what he just said. He said that $21 million for the <coughs> Blind River Diversion Project, that's not a flood control pro project. That's a, a project that gets water from the diversion canal into the swamps to replenish the swamps. But uh, that is a project that's underway. It's been underway now for several years. Uh, so, But anyway, and we're actually working on that through my firm. But uh, I am... Uh, a land surveyor, and I'm from Livingston Parish, but I have a business here f for a long time here in Ascension Parish, and I know a lot of the problems in, in Livingston in Ascension Parish, and I think that I can address help address those, and I'm looking to come serve the people of Ascension Parish, as well as the people of St. James, St. John, and Livingston, and and I want to do what I can to better this parish, and. And anything I can do to do that, I will do. And I will be open. I will be uh, uh, available to the, to the constituents to be able to work and take care of the issues that they face. And I am running for this office, and I would like to ask every voter out there for their vote on, when they go vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McGlynn. Mr. Schechtsneider? First, I want to thank you, the Chamber for the opportunity to be here tonight and to hear the, about the issues that we have as state representatives and the issues that y'all have. I put a lot of hours in, put a lot of miles on my truck through this district. I'm not complaining about this job. It's an honor to represent you and the House and to take this job very seriously. 
Most of the people judge the effectiveness of this elected officials by what they have done and what they do in their district. Well, I'm proud to say that for one term, I've secured 363 million in projects in District 81. That's a lot of money. It translates into a lot of worthwhile projects. With my support in our area, we have been successful in attracting major industry and business expansions. Just downriver from here in St. James Parish, just a couple of weeks ago, a $9 billion industry construction is going on. $9 billion. That's good jobs. It's $85,000 a year jobs. To prepare our workers, I secured a $40 million in the WISE Fund for technical colleges, clearly headed in the right direction. I am a strong supporter of education. I voted many times to secure funding for our schools and fighting for the passage of Act 329, which allows citizens' input into the academic standards. To, that means no to Common Core. So with all of that, the road projects that we've done, the things that are coming to us, I want to thank you. I want to thank District 81. I want to thank my constituents. Thank you for allowing me to be here tonight. Thank you, and God bless you, and I would like to ask for your support. Thank you, Mr. Sheck Snyder. And that concludes our 2015 Ascension Chamber of Commerce Political Forum. We hope that you have found the past two nights to be very informative concerning the people who are running uh, for offices in our parish and statewide. Remember, if you've missed any part of either night, you can see it again on the replay on Ascension Parish TV, Channel 21, or on YouTube. Once again, we'd like to thank the Ascension Parish Government and Parish President Tommy Martinez for allowing us not only to air this live for you, but to also rebroadcast it and stream it through YouTube. On behalf of the Ascension Chamber of Commerce, its Board of Directors, Kendall Matassa, our Chairman, Sherry Despino, our Chief Executive Officer, and Brad Walker, our Government and Community Development Chairman, I want to thank you for joining us. Have a good night. God bless Louisiana. God bless the United States. And God bless Ascension Parish.